You're raised as an athlete to fight back. So why all of a sudden when you retire, do you stop the good fight? This is Finding Center with Nick Hardwick. The neutral line is not meant to be held. It's meant to be crossed. So I'm going to cross the neutral line, and I'm going to see a good signature of a released pressure wave with an elbow away and a heel away because that's going to be the trail storms of the hurricane. So the hurricane, if you picture yourself in a bird's eye view, the same way you picture a hurricane spinning on the, on the map, yep. you're the same way. you got that torpedo, that, that, that column spiraling like a tornado, and then what coming back around the corner, it's all rotary action. The ankle engine? rotary the hip engine rotary the spine engine rotary shoulder engine rotary but you go into the weight room and it's midline stabilization hey guys it's nick hope everyone out there is doing well today thank you so much for the time that you've been given the finding center podcast we hope to be giving you some critical information and perhaps inspiration to use on your journey towards health if you have any recommendations at all or topics or people that you would like us to cover or interview please DM me at Nick Hardwick or at Finding Center Podcast and I will do my best to get back to you. Any questions as well, I love hearing from you guys. You know, as far as health goes, here's a game I like to play. I like to think about my life in reverse. When I'm in my 80s, 90s, and even into my 100s, that's right, I said it, I'd love to be 100 years old, but only if I can do it with health. I want to be able to look back and know that I did everything possible to stave off neurocognitive decline. I want no regrets. As Dr. David Hazy said on one episode, the difference between being old and being an elder is retaining your wisdom. If we allow ourselves to slip physically, mentally, we are going to struggle as well. And with mental decline, we lose the essence of the person and all of that accumulated wisdom. What a shame. Dr. David Hazy says we should rage against that. I totally agree. If you're new here, the Hardwick family, we've announced a new supplement line with our name on it. It's called Hardwick.life. It's like Hardwick.com, but instead of .com, it's .life. My family has been taking these exact pharmaceutical grade supplements for several years now. We love what they have provided us. Our philosophy is to do everything within our power today to ensure that we're giving ourselves the best chance possible of living a fulfilling life. Hardwick.life is centered around taking care of the fundamentals of health through an active lifestyle, getting proper nutrition and supplementation to boost our immunity and protection for the areas in our lives that need special attention. My goal is to restore brain health for a lifetime of running into other giant humans over 30,000 times. That's right, 30,000 head hits. That, as well as looking after my heart, which also I'm sure came under some damage being big and then getting small. And I also have a family history of heart disease. Those are vital for me. Jamie's concern is her immunity and her gut health. That's why she loves the foundation life and gut life. Whatever areas of need or concern you have, hardwick.life has you covered. Be sure to subscribe for 15% off and free shipping. When you do that, you're going to also get access to our simple family-friendly recipes to help get you started or keep you on track with your health journey. We are hardwick.life, foundational elements for a fulfilled life. Check us out. And now at Hardwick.life, we've also secured partnerships with some really cool products that may be of interest to you at some really great prices. And try these ones out. The greatest meats ever. Seriously, the greatest meats ever. Bel Campo Meats. Check out the Anya Fernald podcast. How about this? The Whoop Fitness Tracker Strap to optimize your training, recovery, and sleep. All of the Julian Bakery products, the great assortment of egg white and grass-fed beef protein products that they have, the Power Dot Muscle Stimulator for increased performance, and of course, my friends over at Bubs Naturals. Be sure to check out all of these premium products at hardwick.life. Also, guys, you know this. If you follow my stories on Instagram, at Nick Hardwick, then you already know I post almost every meal that I eat. I do it to show that health and maintaining a fit and active body and lifestyle it's no trick, guys. It's consistency, consistently making good choices. One thing I've put into my body consistently since the company was founded in 2017 is Bubs Naturals Collagen Protein and MCT Oil Powder. One way or another, I have used Bubs religiously, daily. I swear by it. These days, since talking to Doc Amon, I have cut out coffee, 
but I still put the bubs in a protein hot chocolate that has been giving me my morning fix. I love it. It makes it creamier. You're going to love it too. As I know lots of you have taken me up on the recommendation. Jamie swears by it. She has a bit multiple times every single day. No other collagen brand can claim to be 100% NSF certified and donate 10% to charity. That is awesome. If you're in the San Diego area, Bub's products are now available at all Barron's markets. Stop in and pick some up today and see how conveniently health can fit into your life. If you don't have a Barron's near you or don't want to go to the store right now, I get it. Order it online at bubsnaturals.com. That's bubsnaturals.com. Use the code HARDWICK20 for 20% off that order at bubsnaturals.com. Hudman, say what's up to everybody. I got to get in here. Hi. Yeah. All right, Hud. So here's the deal. Have has dad been on you recently about your movement patterns? And when I walk behind you, I'm like, hey, get your inside ankle bone high. Yes. Right? Mostly when I'm wearing sandals, yeah. Yeah, because it's bad. Because you can't do that. So the guy I'm talking to today is gonna help me prove that point. So I've been following this guy, Ricky Stanzi. He was the quarterback of Iowa. And he went on to have a short stint in the National Football League. I think he was drafted in 2011 by the Kansas City Chiefs, went on into Canada for a little bit, and then he's gone on to become a movement specialist with this cool group that I have just recently came across on Instagram. It's called Go to Movement. Go to greatest of all time athletes movement. Greatest of all time athletes movement. So go to. And that's what Ricky's into now. So it's a science of observing human movement patterns in slow motion. And through slow motion video technology, they were able to recognize and compare the identical movement patterns of, and you'll hear Ricky talk about this in the, in the show, crawling babies, indigenous tribes, injury resistant movers, like age group people who are finishing marathons in their 70s and 80s, kind of yeah. sick, right? Yeah, and then guys like Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, who you wouldn't think is the greatest of athlete of all time, but as a quarterback, yes, he is. He's an incredible mover, yeah. not running wise, but in the pocket throwing, he's an incredible mover. Deion Sanders. We talk about him, Pele, Maradona, Serena Williams, Jerry Rice. I mean, it could go on and on for days. A guy that we watched the documentary on, I asked Ricky about this. Did he watch the documentary, the Netflix show on Usain Bolt? We watched that one. That was a pretty good, huh? You can get closer to the mic if you want. Like, we're, we'll be a duet. Okay. So it was a pretty cool show, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and here's what I told you when you came in after Ricky and I got done recording is, hey, you could be, not that you can run like Usain, but you could move like Usain. Obviously, you don't have the, the body that he has or the same muscle fibers that he has, and you're not made up the same. But you could move as efficiently as possible, which I think is a great goal for us, right? Yeah to protect ourselves from injury. So what Ricky talks about in this is everybody who has an Achilles, you know what your Achilles is? No. Your Achilles tendon is that big thick rope thing on the back of your ankle right there. Yeah, that's your Achilles tendon. So everybody who ruptures one of those has the exact same movement pattern. So it's called inside ankle bone low. So not good. It means your ankle is inverting towards the ground on the inside. Not good. So I always say keep your ankle bone high. And that's what they talk about. IABH, inside ankle bone high at Gota. And then the other thing is to pre prevent non-contact ACL tears, which is in your knee, which holds your thigh to your shin bone. And so they talk about that. And that's created by bad movement patterns again. So when I'm on you, I just want you to know, I'm sorry, but it's for your best good. Because if you're going to be an athlete on any level, we want you to stay as safe as possible and to be as good as you possibly can, right? Yeah. So doesn't that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So get closer in here and say what's up to the people. Say what's up, people. What's up, people? What's up, people? And then uh, maybe tell them to go to hardwick.life. We've always got deals on our supplements. Everybody needs, every human needs zinc, magnesium, a multivitamin, vitamin D, a probiotic, fish oil, right? These are things that we, we need in our life. And then also, cool, coming down the pike here, we've got a new protein coming out, Hardwick Life. Did you even know that? No. Yeah, we got, we got new proteins coming out. Sorry, two different types. And Wait, are they different? 
flavors. different flavors. Yeah, we'll have different flavors. Yeah, and then we'll have another one too, which we're going to wait on that one. So get excited about this, people. Cookies and cream. Cookies, the cookies and cream. And then we will also, what else do we have? We got a pre workout coming out, which is going to be super incredible. So that one's cool. It's got creatine in it. It's going to have caffeine in it. It's got theanine in it. It's got uh, green tea extract in it, which is really good. And then it also has what they call glutathione in it. So if you've been a listener of the Finding Center podcast, it's got glutathione, which is neuroprotective. So this is really good for athletes going into competition or coming out of competition if there's head injuries. All right, let's get you to the show. Ricky Stanzi, this dude is fired up, ready to roll. Uh, if the sound is a little off at the beginning, Ricky had to take off his earbuds. So we do adjust that in just a couple of minutes. So bear with it. And then he cleans right up. And like Hudson said, it sounds like we're in the same room, right? Yeah, and it, and it seems like as football players, we just kind of, uh, we know one another. And he was a quarterback, I'm a center, our communication's on point, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. Give this a listen, then go give them a follow at gotamovement.com, and Ricky Stanzi can be found at red underscore pill dot rick, at red underscore pill dot rick. Thanks for listening, guys. Hope you learned a lot. I sure did. Cool. We are rocking and rolling. Ricky, thanks for the time. What's happening, brother? Oh, man, I'm good, bro. Thanks for having me on. Oh, God. What a pleasure. I've been following you. I've been, I've been trying to learn through your social media and through your team at Gota and, and trying to figure out what's going on because, of course, I'm now working with high school athletes and some collegiate athletes. And, of course, you want to keep the kids safe. You want to be doing best yeah. practices. And I came across your stuff, and I just thought – this is really interesting. And this is something that I hadn't heard much of or learned about while I was growing up. Of course, like hindsight's twenty twenty. It's like, Hey, Always. I, I wish I would have had some better information. Maybe I would have been a little faster. Maybe I would have jumped a little higher. Maybe, maybe I could have stayed a little healthier and played a little longer and made a little bit more money, but that's kind of what we're doing now, right? Is learning yeah. from our mistakes and giving back. So Let's, we'll start back with the books that kind of were like the red pill book for me that kind of was like, wait a second. Okay, so and this so, is red, red pill is really interesting, right? Because you say that's your name on Instagram is red. Yeah, just recently pill changed it Rick. to red pill Rick. Yeah, yes. we're, what Goat is trying to do is we're trying to give you the red pill of movement. They've been, they've been telling you one thing, they've been telling you midline stabilization, they've been saying tripod foot triple flexion extension neutral hold these straight lines like a lego man yes. and in reality it's a rotary action it's rotary action up and down the column from your ankle to your hip to your spine to your shoulder that's the technology that's going to propel us forward it's torque all the energy systems in the universe are pivot point energy systems there's energy moving around the corner and so our body is no different so the books tying right back into it spinal engine theory is saying exactly that. There's a gearbox at the lumbar facet joints. It, I can drive force forward, I can drive force back. I really have a locomotive engine to drive me forward, and I have a lifting engine to create reverse and to pull something off the ground. So that book right there was kind of like, hmm, this is interesting. This really goes against the conventional training. Yes. The next book that really the, actually went muscles and meridians led me to spinal engine theory because it's in that book. But Philip Beach, kind of worked on looking at the indigenous cultures and he kept noticing the same postures that were being taken on the ground. So people sitting in these, you know, crisscross, yes. Seiza being Japanese sitting posture where you're basically sitting on your shins. Um, the cowboy, as he calls, calls it, where you're like in a half squat, half kneeling. And then the full blown, which you've seen, you have kids, when they would just rest in their squat. They would oh. play with like, they would just sit in that baby squat. So what... Philip Beach was hypothesizing is that these postures are keeping us tuned so that when we stand up, you don't need a 30 minute foam roller session with stretch bands to go hunt, right? It's everything's built in the daily requirements of the hunter gatherer was exactly that to hunt and gather. It was all centered around locomotion, walk, run, throw, swing, strike, I'm barefoot. And then when I do need to rest, I rest on the floor. That helps keep my inside ankle bone high, as we call it, tuned, because yes. the resting postures are really just upside down inside ankle bone high. 
and it's keeping the bow in the corner tuned, which is really the bow is the rotary action out to load up the connective tissue. And then the corner is when I move that energy back in across the midline, and we talk about heel away all day. So the heel goes away. It's just like the hurricane spinning. There's that trail storm going off. You're no different. Your column, your right side of your body, builds up energy like a hurricane, and then what comes right around the corner, releases, and your heel goes up and away. So those two books started to get me to look at things differently. About the same time, a few months after, I'm on Instagram, and I start looking at a guy by the name of Jose Bosch. Coach Gill is his name to us at Goda, but he's the guy who created the Goda system, or I should say founded it, observed it. Nobody created anything. This is nature's work. We're just observing it in slow motion. And so back in 11, 2011, roughly at that time, he's now got an iPad in his hand. And now for the first time, really, we as regular people that don't have a degree or any white paper on the wall, we can take our iPads, we could put them up to the TV, and we can scrape video. We can go into YouTube and we can look at video. We can take video down and we can start to examine it. And so Gilly started, Goda really started, by being called primal wisdom theory because he was looking at the indigenous. He's like, how do the indigenous stay endurance durable throughout their whole lifetime and never have these non-contact ACLs or Achilles shreds and none of the itises that we're all dealing with in Western you know, society? Yeah. He sees, he's seeing the bow in the corner, inside ankle bone high, seeing the back chain dominance. And he's like, that's not in the weight room. Nobody trains that in the weight room. You know, we're right. doing, we're not doing that. And then he saw Michael Jordan do it. And that was when he was like, oh, that's interesting. So Michael does what the indigenous do. He started looking further into these, you know, decade plus athletes that don't have a non-contact, um, that are able to stay relatively injury free in their sport. Then you go back to the crawling babies. The crawling babies are doing the same movement. They're doing the same rotary action on the ground. They stand yep. it up. Yoda's basically stand up crawling. It's that same rotary action out, rotary back, back, uh, action back in, heel goes away. And then finally, you look at the 70 plus age groupers at the marathon, Ida Keelings, they're, they're doing the same thing. Inside ankle bone, high heel away. These people that have made it to 70 or 80, no K tape, no, no joint replacements, and they're able to move endurance durable and explosively fluid throughout their whole lifetime. So you really span the lifespan of a, of a human being, and you have that sort of nature's context as a background. What is it? What's this body designed to do? What was its main function for hundreds of thousands of years? That was hunt and gather, barefoot, resting on the ground. Well, you look around now, that's been taken out of the equation, right? So now there's going to be collateral damage for living a sedentary lifestyle. The joint replacement numbers are through the roof, oh, yeah. right? More and more people are having itises. The ACL number, the Achilles number keeps going up with the average age going down. So after you're looking at Goda and you're seeing these super tribes, these indigenous, the decade plus athletes, the babies, the, the age groupers, they're all doing the same thing. Now you go take 100 ACLs and 100 Achilles shreds off of YouTube and you watch those frame by frame, guess what? There's a pattern. They're all doing the same thing every single time. So the Goda is landing on outside edge, inside ankle bone high, and they're creating a bow. They're landing and building pressure into the bow. And then, whop, they're releasing that pressure around the corner, across the midline. It's a 45-degree pressure wave, just like this. Well, when someone tears their ACL or their Achilles, they're doing quite literally the opposite. They're sticking the inside edge of the foot in the ground, and they're trying to create reverse torque off the inside corner. So they're inside ankle bone low. They're really using the lifting engine, the reverse engine, to drive themselves forward. Where would this be getting coded into my nervous system? Right. So my nervous system is a servant to the environment. Whatever environment I'm in front of, that's the afferents coming in. I'm telling my nervous system something constantly, right? So if you start to look at the inside edge ACL and Achilles shred, and you see that shape and that pattern, it also shows up in the one rep max style of lifting, yep. the power lift, the Olympic lift. Well, of course, because it's the lifting engine. It's the reverse torque engine. Oh, there you go. It's, yeah. it's the butt under heels in finish, whereas the go is the butt back heels away finish. So there's a forward gear in our spine and in our legs, and there's a reverse gear in our spine 
and in our legs. And so for the hunter gatherer, that afferents or that environment was always going to be what 80, 90 locomotion compared to maybe a 10% of a, yeah, it's a, you know, haul and carry society. I kill something. I need to pick it up, put it over the shoulder. So maybe that one little moment of lifting something for resource allocation to take it back to the tribe. But you're also looking at a society where they're always barefoot. They rest on the floor mm -hmm. and they're walking eight to 10 miles a day, walk, jog, run, throw a swing strike to bring home the kill. So everything's centered around this four locomotion. Now you're in a society where you sit. So you're basically in a, a spine sensory deprivation chamber, a hip and shoulder sensory deprivation chamber that's locking you up. And then you got the shoe on the foot, which is essentially a sofa for your foot. So your foot's getting lazy. It doesn't need to deal with interesting terrain. Everything's nice and clean for you. Everything's a straight line out here. You can walk on a sidewalk. There's no need to be really dialed into the environment anymore. We can get lazy with our feet. So you couple sedentary lifestyle, and then you start to look at the training model, and then you go look at the injuries, and you're like, well, there can't be a coincidence that every single ACL and Achilles shred happens off the inside edge. And then I go to my Olympics and my power lifts and all my core stabilization and tripod foot and upside down BOSU balls and air X pads, and I'm, I'm wobbling to the inside edge, and I'm telling my brain, yeah, it's okay to create torque off the inside edge. So that's where GOTA comes in to say, no, 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 we need to stop prioritizing the lifting engine. We got to stop doubling down on the lifting engine and especially doing it dynamically. And we want to go to the locomotive engine. We want to train that default engine to be inside ankle bone high, back chain dominant, to set a bow, and then to whip that across the midline and release the heel away, staying in that 45 degree pressure wave. And how do we train that in? So there's... We have like a, a, a pyramid sort of, you know, process that we would take a client through. Now, each person is going to be different. The way that Gary would train Jamar Chase is going to be different than the way Gary would tra train my dad, you know, yeah. but everybody's, we're trying to hit all these spots. So we're going to start you on the ground. The base of the pyramid is groundwork. We want to, we want to bring back harmony and, and comfort to that basic hands on the ground resting on my shins, toes are in, heels are away. The first shape that you saw the babies get into when they were starting to rock, the babies yes. just kind of rock back and forth. That's really the baby first messing with, okay, I'm going to load, I'm going to land, and then I'm going to leave. So when a baby's rocking back and forth, it's like their squat and their hinge. Your squat's your landing, your hinge is your leaving. So these two basic patterns that we possess, landing and leaving in a bilateral gathering sort of uh, mode of function, once you split them, split stance, one leg's in a bow, the back leg's leaving. So there's your locomotion, just transferring between the squat and the hinge, the landing and the leaving. So we want to create tune on the ground. We want to get them comfortable on the ground. Then we stand up, and now we're looking at static or support work. Going to use a wall, going to use a stick, some sort of support device along with our slope technology, which is the boards and the chucks, so yeah. that we can feed, like, like you're standing on a roof, so you can feed the energy inside ankle bone high and funnel everything to the strong side of the foot. So use the boards, use the static stuff. Then we get into traveling drills. Now we're actually moving that pressure wave. We're actually going through the full cycle, land, leave, reset. We're doing that, you know, in your basic dynamic warm-up type setup. But we're feeding the rotary system, making sure it's inside ankle bone high. Then the, the top tier would be like fluidity and, 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 and you know, kind of ex explosivity. Now you're talking your landmine. Now you're talking your sled push. Now you're talking your henny press. There's, you know, you, you, you have your options to where you want to drive force forward. And so we're gonna, we're never gonna bend the pattern to lifting. We're gonna make sure that everything we're doing in the weight room is reflecting that go to pattern. Because in reality, when our athletes, and we're really talking about the, the basic, the, the, the majority of sports outside of Olympic lifting and power lifting, it's all locomotive engine. Mm -hmm. So there's no barbells to be lifted on the field. It's all drive gear. If you're at O-line and you got that 300 pounder coming at you, you don't want to go backwards. You right. need to kick it into drive gear and hold him off. You need to stay back chain dominant. Vice versa, he's trying to drive you backwards. So it's really two drive gears hitting each other in sort of a battle. Linebacker, running back, same thing. The only guy that's really using the back pedal is the DB just to kind of survey. And then yeah. even then, when he needs to 
turn on his 45 degree cuts, every one of those 45 degree cuts is switching into go to gear. So everything is surrounding us in locomotive, but we're not really training it. We're training right. the lifting engine and then we're holding straight lines when we're doing other stuff in the weight room. How hard is it for us to untrain ourselves, right? Like I've been in a yeah. movement pattern for the last, uh, I don't know. I don't know when, when I don't <laughs> even know. I don't even know if I'm moving incorrectly now. I right. mean, I, I've since following you guys, I'm really trying to be conscious of the way I'm moving, but I don't know the system, right? So it's like, you got to get yeah. dig into the system, understand the system. But from what I picked up now, I'm starting to like analyze the way kids are moving and the way, like I just got done with a football camp and they're seventh and eighth graders. They're running with their feet. Like yep. a duck. And I was like, yep. no, 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 we, we at least got to get our toes pointing get in. Yes. And I'm like, hey, run on that outside blade. But yes, I, I guess the question is, there are exceptional athletes who make it to the higher levels. And, mm -hmm. and I see you guys on the Instagram feeds. All the coaches have different posts of guys who are at the combine or who have mm -hmm. made it. Mohamed Sanu, for instance, who has yes. made it. Yes. It's a pretty successful career, but is set up for injury and perhaps more injury in his case based on his movement patterns. I guess the question is after having done something for so long, mm -hmm. how hard is it to untrain and then to retrain? Yeah. So when things happen like that on the field or the court or the diamond, that you're not falling back into those same movement patterns that had been burnt into your nervous system for so long. Absolutely. And that really depends on who is the client at hand, right? If it's a younger kid, it's much easier. There's less damage that's been done. There's been less time repping out that bad pattern. As you get older and you start to stack the injuries up, it becomes a little bit more difficult. But the first thing I try to get across to the coaches is let's stop the bleeding, right? So let's not feed anything that's going to go in the opposite direction of what we really want to go to. So we stop the bleeding and then it's a game of reps. It's always been about a game of reps. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing when you were in first grade and you were learning cursive or you were learning how to write for the first time. You trace that lowercase a over and over again. You don't even think about it now. It's subconscious. Wow, it comes right out. Same thing with your movement patterns. So we want to get a bunch of reps in a day. We want to feed that nervous system. As we go on, eventually, ideally, you walk away from the recode. Why? Because your walking pattern is the recode. Your walking goda, your running goda. You've now become aware of your shoe choices. You've become aware of your sitting choices. Mm -hmm. So now maybe you're adopting more time on the ground. You're using a more minimalist shoe. You're walking more often. You're adding a three mile walk to your day. The first four months, man, you had to grind on that recode. But as you got better and better and better, you started to take little pieces off. Like, I don't need that, that exercise anymore. Why? Well, because I'm subconsciously more goda today than I was four months ago. And I just keep leveling up the recode to eventually you want to get to the point where you can just walk, run, be barefoot, sit on the ground. You know, you want to have a, a lifestyle that would feed good movement as opposed to feeling like you always had to be exercising when you were really taking away from yourself. Yes. The exercise can be as much as you want it to be. But back to your you know, initial question is how long? It really depends. And the first thing is stop the bleeding. And the next thing is let's start leveling up the, the go to reps immediately. You know, it's funny. I've got an eight and a six year old. And since following you guys, I, I'm heavy on them too. Right. So I'm walking behind them. Like, Hey, keep that inside ankle bone high. And they're I like, saw what the are you picture today and they look good in the picture you posted. It was either today or yesterday you posted them. Their ankle bones yeah. were high. They're, I was like, nice. Nick. I tell you, they're super active. So I think yes. they've got that to their advantage. And I guess yes. that would be the thing, right? You're talking about the sedentary life. And yes. when I'm thinking like in early development, kids probably they're just naturally, they do things the way they do things. And if yes. parents aren't correcting them or if coaches aren't correcting them, then they've got a chance to kind of spiral the wrong direction. I feel yep. like a total jerk sometimes because I'm walking behind them. I'm like, hey, no, 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 that's not what we want to see. But they're oh, yeah. obviously, day. after eight years, they're completely used to me correcting them all the time. Right, right. Especially with their movements and yes. the way they do things. And, and and it's, so, yeah, it's important for the kids because I don't think we realize how quickly you could decode even a baby. I mean, I yes. see little babies that have not really learned how to walk yet, and they've got – you know, they got the shoes on. They've got a full on oh. Nike shoe. And they, I don't think a, we don't quite understand that that is messing with our pattern. 
over, you know, over cushioned shoes are not your children's friend. They're not, they're messing with their gait pattern. Um, a lot of sitting, sitting marathons, what we call them, where you're sitting two to three hours playing video games and you're in that same posture. That's really not your friend. So I think the best thing a parent can do, keep your kid barefoot, keep them on the ground. And if they're a late crawler, do not stand them up. Cause you'll get the uh -oh. pediatrician. They'll say, are they, are they walking yet? Are they walking yet? They better be walking. No, keep them on the ground. Let them crawl as long as they want to. Cause that crawling pattern is them sinking the singularity up. It's just the pressure wave moving back and forth. And it's all going to be inside ankle bone high. Then they're going to pop that thing up and they're going to move and they're going to be more inside ankle bone high than let's say their buddy down the street who their parent put them in, you know, over cushioned shoes that were really thick sole and they didn't have yeah. a chance to really develop the sensory pad at the bottom of the foot. And then they started to sit them in these chair devices that the kid really didn't need, but they did it more often. You're already, you're getting decoded the second, or you're getting coded good or bad the second they come out of the womb. Because that's the environment. Whatever's there, it's going to start to, uh, you know, take hold. It's kind of like Chinese foot binding in a way. You know, a shoe oh, yeah. is essentially a very, you know, not as extreme version of Chinese foot binding. You see that, is that good for the foot? Well, no, but look, the nervous system has to accommodate to what the environment is surrounding that, that structure. Describe that pressure wave to me. So pressure wave, we're talking 45 degree pressure wave. So if I draw a line to infinity off the midline of my body, my spine okay. line, right? You want yep. to consider that to be neutral. If I open up a sort of 22, a 22 and a half degree marker, and when I land my chest dot, if I had a dot on my chest and a dot on my kneecap, they're both going to point out at that 22 and a half degree marker. Those bony landmarks are really just speaking to the rotary action at the hip, ankle, spine, and shoulder. So I really have, imagine three dots, a dot on your kneecap, dot on your chest, and a dot on the front of your shoulder. Those three dots are not meant to stay on that neutral line pointing straight ahead. So imagine those dots as a laser pointer. I would not want my laser pointer to shine straight to infinity. When I land, I want my laser pointer to shine 22.5 to infinity. That's going to build up that road reaction. Just like if you were going to punch somebody, if you watch yeah. the slap boxing matches, they <laughs> wind up a big rotary bow and then whop, they come around the corner. So I've loaded up that bow in the 22 five. I've got the pressure wave built. I'm inside ankle bone high. I'm second toe straight. So I can create more torque, more rotary action at that hip and ankle. And now I'm going to slingshot that thing around the corner. I'm going to catapult. I'm going to drive the energy around the corner and I'm going to release it. The neutral line is not meant to be held. It's meant to be crossed. Oh. So I'm going to cross the neutral line, and I'm going to see a good signature of a released pressure wave with an elbow away and a heel away because that's going to be the trail storms of the hurricane. So the hurricane, if you picture yourself in a bird's eye view, the same way you picture a hurricane spinning on the, on the map, yep. you're the same way. you got that torpedo, that, that, that column spiraling like a tornado, and then what coming back around the corner, it's all rotary action. The ankle engine, rotary. The hip engine, rotary. The spine engine, rotary. Shoulder engine, rotary. But you go into the weight room and it's midline stabilization. Oh, it's tripod it. foot, it's neutral. You turn on the tape and you're like, what is that? Why is the kneecap and the chest pointing out? Well, that's how you load a bow. And so when you look at how the swing coaches get it. The throw coaches get it because nobody's going to argue that it's you know not rotational when you throw or swing. But what they're not seeing is that the throw and the swing is just an offshoot of the forward locomotive pattern, right? So if I'm swinging a baseball bat, that'd be an underhand swing. I can also overhand swing my arm, so I can throw a football overhand. I could skip a rock underhand. A walk and a run would be an underhand swing of the arm. A throw, a volleyball spike, would be an overhand swing of the arm. So the shoulder has this brachiation technology where it can swing. It can swing underhand. It can swing overhand. And the legs have this spring technology. So the arms swing and the legs spring. And I build up that spring like a bow. I load it into a bow and then whop, bring it around the corner and release and the heels go away. So that's your pressure weight. You're, you're dealing with pressure. I'm building pressure into the side of the body, into the column. And then I'm releasing that pressure across the midline. It's being recycled through the spinal engine. I'm catching it 
over on the other side where I built another bow and I start another pressure wave and then I release that one back. So it's just a singularity. It's really that, it's that torus. It's that Tesla map. It's that energy moving around the corner. It's a pivot point system. We want our pivot point to be the outside edge of the foot. That's that inside ankle bone high technology, funneling everything to the strong side of the foot. Because if I start funneling to the inside edge of the foot, now I run the risk of getting stuck in the mud quite literally where that shin bone gets locked, yeah. but your thigh bone can rotate out. That's the ACL tear. That's the Achilles shred. It's ACL when you step out. And it's going to be Achilles when you step back 90% of the time. So one thing that I was thinking of as you were talking about that foot out technology and the femur gets to rotate out and the hips come in, that's pass protection, right? So for me, it's like, and that's, it is, and I tell people this all the time, it is the most like physiologically unsound position to be in. And even when you do it and I'm teaching it to kids and I'm not even doing it full speed anymore. But I wake up the next morning, I'm like, my knees are killing me because yep. that it happens to be like the position to be in. It's like knees inside of ankles, ankles down-ish. Yep, yep. But I, I wonder, I do wonder if there is a way, because you have to have all the cleats on the ground, right? You have to have all seven studs in the ground. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a fun talk here is like feet forward, perhaps, instead of out would yes. maybe be beneficial but that would mean you got to have a pretty good amount of ankle flexibility exactly you nailed right. it on the head so here's the issue with the o-line thing once again we got to remember when do we start teaching people o-line techniques you're already dealing with a kid who's probably sat a bunch most of us show up with our feet yes. turned out so we're trying to create a technique that's going to fit the body at hand that's so right. i've got you know the o-line i'll talk to i'll say well first and foremost yes of course the straight foot feels crazy to you you don't have the ankle range, right? Yeah. So you're not really able to feel what a true outside edge, or should I say, it doesn't feel strong to you because you've yeah. never really, you haven't left, you haven't gone through that pyramid yet. We got to start you at the bottom and try to build it back up so that your ankle can handle digging the outside edge of the cleat into the ground and then grounding down through there. If you've got ankle discrepancies and you don't have the full range, if somebody's 300 pounds and they're rushing at you, you're going to figure out whatever you need to figure out Yes. to hold your ground and so the techniques start to get taught that well this guy did it this way off the inside edge of his cleat and he was good so we're going to keep doing it that way yeah. it doesn't mean that it's not successful but there is collateral damage on the back end that's yes. kind of what we're it's like yeah you could be strong off the inside edge of your foot of course i mean people can olympic lift tons of weight people can do high jumps at you know enormous heights so that's reverse technology so you can be strong and you can create torque off the inside corner with, with real force, but down the line, the collateral damage from that is the knee replacement. I remember right. DeMore Smith, if you remember during the you know, OTAs, they'd always come in and they'd draw that line down the middle of the field and they'd say, everybody on this side of the room is going to need a knee or hip replacement by the time they're 60. And we all just looked around and we're like, yeah, okay, whatever, dude, we're going. Sure. Sure, yeah, that's fine. I'm not thinking about that today. It's Wednesday, right? We got, we got nine on seven tomorrow. So it's like the, the, we don't think kind of long-term or collateral mm -hmm. damage. The short answer to that is could we do a GOTA? Yes. Is there a process that's needed for the old lineman first and foremost? Absolutely. Yeah. The first thing I'd have to do with you, Nick, if we were, you were my client and it's year seven, I'm going to say, all right, well, Let's get you on the ground first. Can you even get into child rockers? Oh, no, my ankles no. are too tight. All right. Well, like, yeah, then we got to start there. Like, we yeah. got to start to kind of build you up slowly and know that it's not going to subconsciously show in your movement pattern yet. But as we keep grinding away at it, we could chip away at that. It's going to be a lot harder for a 10-year, 11-year vet, but it'd be much easier for a young 6th, 7th grader old lineman who hasn't had all the injuries yet Maybe we can recode their ankle faster and we can start to get their foot a little bit straighter. So that would sort of be the process. The O line's a real tough one because a lot yeah. of the technique is what you said, digging the inside edge. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we're presented with a lot of kids with inside edge already. I think that's probably right, yeah. And so we teach the technique that's gonna fit them kind of like when you go into the weight room to squat. And if you told kids to squat with their feet straight, they don't have the ankle range of motion for that. Right. They've been wearing the LeBrons and the, you know, whatever the big shoe is on their foot, their, their ankle engine and their foot is stuck together. 
So they're just like, the coach says, well, just turn your feet out because you can complete the task at hand with yes. a little bit of, so it kind of, it's a slippery slope because it starts to lead to things. And my goal for you would be, well, Nick, I don't want you to have to have a knee replacement. Right. So it's not just about this season. It's about when you're 50 or 60 running around with your kids. That's just important to a go-to coach as the performance during that season. Now. We want, we're, mm -hmm. we're teaching in durability. We're teaching durability and you get the performance increase as a side effect, just because a joint segment that's more secure and more durable, well, of course it's going to transfer the pressure wave with more efficiency. I mean, the path of the path of the path of least resistance is going to give you the most force. So the, the least resistance to us is inside ankle bone high, bow and corner. You're working with nature's technology, not against it. That's better for you now and in the long term. And then it becomes, who am I talking to? What are their history of injuries? How mm -hmm. old are they? How long will this recode take? I bet you guys had a field day with Kevin Durant when he tore yes. his Achilles. Yeah. And what did you see in that? Well, you know, in, in Gilly and Gary actually had contact with somebody in Kevin's camp. And we're saying what we say all the time. Hey, guys, that person's inside ankle bone low. That is a high risk. For an Achilles shred. Even oh, before yeah, yeah. it happened? Yes. Even before it? Wow, no Even kidding. before it happened. So they, they, they had a contact there. They tried to, what we try to do with a lot of people, try to reach out and, and you know, help out and really save them from that contact catastrophic, that non-contact mm -hmm. catastrophic. But it is what it is. If you're inside ankle bone low and you play around with that, it's Russian roulette with the connective tissue. It's Russian roulette. You're, you're, you don't know what's going to happen. All you got to do is put that thing down on the ground the wrong way one time, and you do it enough each rep. It's like string cheese. You're pulling a little, a little yeah. strip off each time until that one time where the force exceeds the capacity of that tissue, and bam, there it goes, and it shreds. Same pattern every time. So we've got to get rid of that habit in the athlete. Durant's got that, that habit. He's an inside ankle bone low athlete. We got to clean that out. If, he's, if he comes to go to work, fixing that day one. We're getting you in child rockers. We're mm -hmm. trying to get you to the strong side of your foot. Now we've got an Achilles shred that we got to deal with. So you can see how the years and years of doing makes something it more, makes it harder. You know, yeah. it's more of a challenge for the coach, which is, which is understandable. But that is the only way to keep him from shredding his, his, his Achilles. And people will say, well, he's got to train the position of injury. Guys, the dude's been playing basketball his whole life. He – Runs like a duck, jumps like a duck, squats like a duck. He's been doing this. If anybody would be strengthening that pattern, it would be him. He's yes. living in that pattern all day. So by your definition, he should ne there should never be an Achilles shred or an ACL shred because people have been living in that pattern. They've been walking like that, running like that, training like that. If you're saying we can make it stronger, then we should be able to – then there should be no non-contact. Well, then they'll say the range of motion. All these guys do is they take a step back. Kevin Durant took a step back. That was it. Day. He's done that a gazillion times on the court. Alshon Jeffrey, wide receiver for the Eagles. Yeah. Off the blocks, wide receiver release, takes a step back, tears his Achilles. You think he hasn't done that range of motion enough? Come on. There's just – when you start to ask the questions, the common sense has been just – has left the room. We've, right. we've traded common sense for flashcards. Say, so do I – can I remember all these limited words? This is an energy system. We have to appreciate how the energy is moving through that body. All the great movement coaches do it. The swim coach, the throw coach, the swing coach, all the great movement coaches, they don't know nothing about anatomy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't they matter, understand, yeah. They understand how energy moves. You know who needs to know the anatomy? The surgeon. He's the one taking things apart and putting them back together. Do you know how to build an iPhone? I sure as hell don't, nope. but I know how to use it. So there's a difference there, right? There's a, we have to understand mm -hmm. what exactly is it that we're doing here. We are training movement. Movement is the ultimate. The magic is in the movement and the destructions in the movement. It's either way. It depends. It just depends on how you're moving. You're, there's a reason that the ACL and Achilles shred number is just skyrocketing. Yeah. There's a reason the joint replacement number is skyrocketing. And I don't find it to be a coincidence that every dude that walks through Gota or every lady that walks through Gota that's having trouble, they're all inside ankle bone low. They're all inside ankle bone low. Yeah. Then you go watch the Achilles and ACL shreds. All inside ankle bone low. Then you watch the power lifts and Olympic lifts. All inside ankle bone low. And then they're resting in shoes, sitting in chairs. And then we've got on upside down bow shoes and Airx pads. 
So if you just look at the environment that's being presented to these athletes, it's an inside ankle bone low environment. Go to here to change that using slope technology, using groundwork, revaluing the floor, paying attention to how they travel through space. And then at the end, we start to work on that fluidity and explosivity. So that's kind of the challenge, right? Is getting into the, the PTs and getting into the athletic oh, trainers. And I bet, out of argument. I, I, oh, I bet there, that's a, that's a battle. I love it's, it. Is it received at all? I mean, are some teams more forward thinking? Have you been in with teams? Have you been in with athletic trainers and athletic training departments and, you know, the head of physical developments and are they seeing that, anything? Yeah, the, the, the tide is turning. We're having more and more people get interested. More and more people are starting to ask, hey, what is this? More and more people are trusting their eyes. And that's the big thing. Because if you don't trust the slow motion video, if you don't really watch it for what it is, and you refuse to because of maybe your education makes you feel like, oh, shoot, I just spent six years of education here, and this system is going to literally crumble all the stuff that I learned. There's going to be some sort of natural, I'm going to hold back from that. Pushback, yeah. Pushback. There's a reason that the billion dollar sports organizations have all adopted slow motion video. Why? Because the refs can't see it with the naked eye. It's <laughs> happening too fast. You got to slow it down. You got to use the technology at our hands, right? So the magician is making millions of dollars off the fact that you can't see it with the naked eye. The billion dollar sports organizations are using the slow motion video to get the call right. And you can put somebody away for life if you've got it on camera. That's you right there. You're stealing. Got you. Ooh. So the slow motion video, the eye in the sky never lies. We know this as football players. You had to answer to whatever it was on Monday morning. Good Every or day. It's Every ugly. day. Yeah. And so when you watch somebody move, it's like, hey, that's how you move. You can tell me how you feel or what you're thinking, but in reality, you're moving like that. And that type of pattern that you're exhibiting is so happens to be the same pattern of all the, all the injuries, all the non-contact. It's, just, it's practical. Shot. It's yes. practical. It's applicable. It's, and it does make sense to back in something. I think it's kind of the way I would describe what you guys are doing. It's like, let's go to the age groupers. Let's go to the best athletes of all time and let's see how they move and how do they yes. stay healthy Yes. And, and back in what you're calling the technology, that IOS, which I really appreciate that. Have you seen the uh, Usain Bolt documentary? I haven't. Is it on Netflix? Oh, oh dude, you got to see it. It's on Netflix. It's, Probably some it's good inc footage there. He it's was, incredible. He was a Goda. He was a Goda yes. Until he, when he tore that hamstring in that last race, guess what? I did an IGTV on it. Inside ankle bone low. So, you, you really? know, he, if you start to enter that training in, and this is the thing, it's like, well, he did, you know, it depends. Every single day you're coding. Every single second you're getting afferents into the, to the nervous mm -hmm. system. So, if somebody retires or they get in an old age or they train, change the way they're training, that starts to affect everybody. When he won that, when he uh, set the world record, he was moving Goda. When he yeah. tore his hamstring, he was moving Woda. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But in large, absolutely. That yeah, and I, think, I think part of that, he sustained an ankle injury doing something not during track. There you go. And, and, and then, then he was trying starts, to grind it out. Yeah, because it was kind of, yep, yep, it was coming down to the wire. He ended up going yep. to Germany, working with a guy there who had worked with a ton of players and there you go. had to just had to grind through it. But the, the interesting thing about watching the footage for him, for me, and this is before I found Gota and seeing the locomotive systems, which I thought was super cool because his spine moved. Yep. Yes. When you watched him from behind, it was like, that's so counterintuitive to everything that I had been. Yes. It's like, stay straight, stay, upright, yeah. cheek to cheek, right? We yep. went, when you were describing even elbows out as kind of that, yeah, you know, the away. hurricane, elbow yep. way. That to me, like watching him move, he looked like a cheetah when you see how much their spine moves and engages. Yes. And then one thing that, kind of talking through this that that really struck a chord thinking back to that and thinking about him because i've seen his pictures on the facility up, up yes. on the wall right I've, yes. I've seen it so he he talked about when he's really moving and when he's getting up to speed and he knows his timing's getting where it needs to be when his calf is both of his calves get cut by the spikes because i think he's 
inside ankle high, heel and away, he's yeah. and he's whipping it through there. So it's coming yes. across that midline as you describe it. Yes. And yes. that to me was like, oh, no kidding. No wonder they yes. celebrate him so much because obviously the fastest of all time, but also right. has the correct movement patterns. And, and then you're talking about the spinal engine there. I mean, you're talking about yeah. a spine that's moving like a kite. It's just flying column to column, yeah. side to side. And it's all in that back chain. And it's gathering energy, releasing energy, gathering energy, releasing energy. It's just an energy system, building pressure into the column, releasing pressure out of the column, catching that pressure over on the other side. And just You're basically playing ping pong with the pressure wave. Your yeah. columns are the right side of your body and the left side of your body are the ping pong paddles. And the pressure is the ping pong. You're just boom, boom, back and forth, 45 degree pressure wave. Like you yep. said, you put Usain Bolt on tape, all the Tin Man Lego stuff that they taught us falls apart. Yeah. It completely gets, it falls apart. The, the, the argument's no longer able to, to stand on, on two legs because it doesn't have any weight anymore. People can't say midline stabilization anymore. Why? Because I'll tell them, show it to me on tape. They crickets. Show me tripod foot on tape. Crickets. Why does the heel go away? Crickets. Why is that kneecap pointing out? Crickets. Inside ankle bone high. Cricket. It's just over and over. Nobody wants to answer to the slow motion video. So it's to us at Goda, it's best practice wins. You know, we're going to show you. We're going to recode people. We haven't had a non contact in four years. We keep getting everybody inside ankle bone high. They won't. Why? Because you can't tear your knee. That's not how the design works. If you want to tear your ACL, you're going to, I gave you a cadaver of a shin and a thigh, just those two bones, just for visual purposes for everybody. Yep. And I got that ACL coming from the back and linking into the front. What you're going to do to tear that ACL is you're going to hold that tibia still, and you're going to spin that thigh away. You're going to spin it out. That's the same mechanism that's happening when someone puts their foot in the ground. That's the same mechanism that gets the Olympic lift off the ground. It's the same one that gets the deadlift off the ground, the big heavy back squat off the ground. It's all that same stuff. And then you go double down when you're making someone do dumbbell lunges and you're telling them to keep their foot straight mm -hmm. or neutral and you don't, you don't move off neutral. It's a rotary action either off the inside corner of the foot or the outside corner of the foot. So start watching when you see kids are on Instagram, you'll see a lot of these dips in on the air X pads, even on flat ground. Yep. Then you put them on a Bosu ball. It's over. It's over. So you're feeding that you're feeding inside ankle bone low to the nervous system. The nervous system's a servant. It doesn't get to decide. Chinese foot binding. Why wouldn't it go inside ankle bone low? You've been telling it to do that every day this past week for two hours. Of course it will listen to you. Just like it will listen when you start going inside ankle bone high. What movements would you eliminate from the weight room? We, we walked away from Olympics and power lifts. Like the, yeah. the big ones, the big ticket ones that everybody kind of like, wow, that's a deal breaker. Oh, okay. So we've walked away from Olympics and power lifting because, well, it's the lifting engine. When you want to create, when you want to create torque to pull something off the ground, you're going to create a little flexion in the spine. You have that curve to start. They call it lordosis. You flatten that curve. So when they say get a flat back, straight spine, yeah, you're flexing. It's a flexed spine because you started in the curve. You flatten the curve. That's flexion. And then there's a dip in inside ankle bone high. You dip down inside ankle bone low, and you create torque off the inside corner of the yeah. foot. And then you spiral out, which is why you want to squeeze your glutes at the top. Let yeah. drive that rotary force torque out, heels in, butt under. Yeah, that's the lifting engine. But when I actually go to play, I need the locomotive engine. I need to drive my butt back and get my heels away. So it's kind of, that's what we want to highlight, butt back, heels away, that driving force forward, right? And if you, here's a good one for you, Nick, because I know you understand the hand. People understand the hand almost better than they understand the foot. Yes. When you're taking on a block, you ain't taking on a block, thumbs and, <laughs> and index no. fingers. You're yeah. not going inside wrist bone low. You're, you're going inside yeah. wrist bone high, and you're taking that block on the strong side of the hand. It's the same thing for your foot. It's the same force lines. It comes from a quadrupedal lineage, which is why you're like, dude, the cheetah does it. Yeah, it's a quadrupedal lineage. The, the lateral side is the strong side. And the inside is the weak side, the nurturing side, the, the reproductive organs, right? All the, all the you know, comfort in the, the yeah. soft is on the inside. The balance, the dexterity of the finger, the thumb, the index. The balance is in the big toe. The compression's on the outside edge. So if you stick to that basic inside wrist bone high, inside ankle bone high, now you know how to create pressure uh -huh. and release pressure and how yeah. to stay durable doing it because that's, that's our big goal.
Can we do this in a way that keeps us durable? Yeah, the indigenous have showed us the way, the decade plus athletes have showed us the way, the babies are doing it, and so are the 70 plus age groupers. So I came across your work. I follow a couple guys in speed and functional movement and they use your protocols to get their athletes loose and to start. And these guys are, they, they seem pretty phenomenal. I mean, it's Pierre's elite performance. I don't know yes. if you know Shea Pierre <laughs> and then Alex Whitehair, who's real game athletics on Insta. Mm -hmm. and, and they tout you guys and kind of the movements and the protocols that you have. That's how I came about you in the first place. And then okay, yeah, nice. I, I guess the question is, are you guys sensing – a groundswell? Are you sensing more people coming to you? Is it growing? Is the momentum building? Yes, because the biggest thing that Gilly wanted was you can now admit that you're injured. You can admit that you're hurting because you yeah. know we've been living in a no pain, no gain society. Mm -hmm. Just be quiet. Don't complain about your injuries. Go in there and lift that weight, right? Well, now we're like, no, everybody's hurting. Shea was the same way. He's like, dude, I, I love this stuff. My body feels better. I feel better now than I did back when I was playing, right? Same with me, same with the other guys who have, who have played sports. So now that we give you the liberty to say, dude, are you hurting? Like, is that leg bothering you, bro? Because you're inside angle bone low over there. I know something's wrong. Yeah, well, you know, I pulled the groin. So now more and more people are kind of looking at it. And the thing we try to tell coaches is there's an incubation period. Just like you know that you had to take time to learn how to watch film, right? It's not just turn on the tape and just all the information comes – pouring into your brain you become the greatest offensive you got to learn how to watch tape you got to know what to look for you got to start to see tendencies mm -hmm. it's the same thing at quarterback you got to learn how to watch tape so the actual act of watching tape is a skill set so there's definitely an incubation period for people and i'll have conversations with somebody you know we'll talk and then six months later they'll come back to me and be like dude I, I get it now i get it now so right. you, you got to let people have that incubation period there's always going to be sort of a, a little bit of a downfall to social media because you don't, you know, it's hard to have these long discussions. Right. It's hard to have a true hour to hash out. What is it that you're exactly saying? So mm -hmm. we do a post to, you know, capture attention, to get you to think, to get you to see something differently. And the more content we put out, the more people that kind of join that groundswell, you start to see more and more of an influence. And our whole thing was this, listen, we're going to talk to the athlete and we're going to talk to the parent. That's who I'm interested in, right? They're not entrenched. They don't care about what's right or wrong or who's fighting over there on Instagram on the comment section. They just want <laughs> right. to be happy. They just want to be happy and healthy. Let us do yeah, that. That's right. So they just want to be happy and healthy. When you show Goda to people, regular people don't have white paper, you know what they say? That makes a lot of sense. Every single time, Nick, every single time, everyone's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. They don't have any flash, they don't have any words in their head or right. made up terms or isolated concepts. They don't care. They don't care about what you call the inside ankle bone. They don't care about the medial malleolus. It's your inside ankle bone. Don't let it go low. Why? Because all the injuries happen there. Keep it high. Can you understand that? Yeah, okay. Perfect. Makes sense, well, yes. This is reality. You're, you're at a camp with seventh and eighth graders. Are you gonna use, hey guys, this is your medial malleolus? What? Yeah. They don't care about that. You say, hey guys, that's your inner ankle bone. Put your hands on it, you feel that? Okay, take it down low. That's bad. All right, bring it up high. That's good. Y'all feel that? Okay, let's move on. So we want to, we're taking back the language. It's ours. The human being, us. You don't need a piece of white paper on the wall to study movement anymore. You've got a $1,000 computer, $2,000 computer, if you've got a tablet and a phone. Now you can watch slow motion. Go watch it. Go check yeah. it out. See what's happening. And then you can start to call BS on all the stuff that's not actually happening in slow motion. So yeah, we're ruffling some feathers because we're saying what is not true. People don't want to hear that. Well, the mm -hmm. truth isn't always great. We're here for the, for the facts, not the feelings. If people get you know, upset about it, that's fine. But the, 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 the thing to remember at the end of the day is we're not selling hats and shirts. This isn't <laughs> art where it's like, right. well, that's your opinion, man. That looks cool on you. No, no, no. This isn't, it's not my opinion that inside ankle bone low leads to all the Achilles shreds or the ACL shreds. That's what I'm observing in yeah. slow motion. If you can show me an ACL and an Achilles shred off inside ankle bone high bow, well, then we'll pack up and leave. But nobody answers that question. You don't nobody see it. Do you ever see it? No. 
Because you can't tear the knee that way. Like I said, if you yeah. want to tear the knee or you want to tear the Achilles, you got to hold that tibia tear and spin the thigh. You got to go in reverse. Yeah. And just think about it common sense wise. If I'm walking forward, right, my line of motion is forward. If you watch people walk, you'll see that arm come around the corner. Yep. You'll see the spine come around the corner. Why would I take that leg and spin it the opposite way of the line of motion? That whole right side of your body should open and close together just like a door. Yeah. Open together, that hinge closed together. So it's, it's, it's harmony. It's harmony. Yeah. Open the column, close the column. Stay inside ankle bone high in the back chain the whole time. Build the pressure, release the pressure. So yeah. however you want to look at it, however you need to convince yourself, there is an incubation period, and I understand that part of it, but this, the, the skill set of watching slow motion is exactly that, a skill set, and it, it, it does take time. You know, it's funny, having been around just like you, some of the best athletes in the world, the ones as you're talking about kind of swinging that door open and swinging it closed, some of the best athletes that I've been around, we thought they were strutting, right? I was like, yeah, swag walk. Why are you strutting like that? It's like, what are you talking about? This is how, this is how I yeah. move, right? We, we and and really it is. Yeah, but that's kind, of, that's kind of how they walk. It's like J.J. Wow. Watt walks like that. Joey Bosa yeah. walks like that. Sean Merriman, before he got his knee jumped on from behind, walk like that i mean that's yes. antonio cromarty some of the fastest guys i played with walk just like that and, yep, you know, yep. And, I, and i thought it was just man that dude's super confident or what yeah. that's going on <laughs> well they are they, they are. are the goals are always confident why they yep. feel good man they play fast Deion sanders randy moss randy moss is on microphone pregame saying 84 don't stretch 84 don't stretch. He's just sitting there with his arms crossed. Everybody's <laughs> doing stretches. Why doesn't he feel that he needs to stretch? I'll oh, tell you so why. Good. That dude's inside ankle bone high. He's a goda. He heals away all day. He, he knows it. Yeah, he, he knows, knows it. it. Yeah. These guys innately knew. And, you know, Allen Iverson didn't lift weights. Um, Randy stayed away from it. These guys innately knew that I'm not – that's for you, man. If you, until you can guard me, then maybe I'll start lifting weights. Deion Sanders showed up at the combine pops out of a Ferrari and just scoots <laughs> down the freaking 40. And he's like, does a cheetah stretch? Dion got it. Dion got it. We got clips of Dion saying when he would look at wide receivers, he would say, if that back foot ain't straight, I'm coming after you. Because he knew that a straight foot is more stable than a duck foot. And so yeah. if he saw a duck foot, he was going to smack you right off the line. So oh, yeah. these guys that understood it, and they, maybe they couldn't explain it, but there was something to it that they knew was something was, there's the magics in the movement. Yeah. Just like the destructions in the movement. You have it both ways. It's duality. You can be healing yourself with your movement pattern, or you could be destroying yourself with your movement pattern. And I bet Dion probably knew that the inferior athlete had the duck feet. Cause yeah, that's what he, you, that's what you do when you show up to a game, right? You show up to yeah. a game, you show up to a field, you're evaluating body parts. I'm looking at a guy's ankles. I'm looking at his knees. I want to see his hips. How's he built? How's he going to feel when I fight him? How strong do I think he is before I, even, before I even put my hands on him? So Dion knows like duck foot, that guy said, he's a bad athlete. He's seen it a hundred times. Just like you don't let your kids play in the street. Why? Because you'll get hit by a car. Not a good that's idea. Observation based. You don't need a study to tell you that. Common sense would say, hey, don't play in the street. Why? Well, we've had some observations of that being a bad thing. All right, well, let's stay away from it. The first indigenous person that got bit by a poisonous snake, man, can you imagine, like the paperwork that must have had to go on to say, hey, God, <laughs> let's stay away from that snake. Why? I don't know, because Tim got bit and now he's dead. Let's just, our observations are saying stay away from that snake. And so we, everything we do is really observation based when you stop and think about it. You yeah. tell your kids this all the time. Hey, that's bad behavior, and that's good behavior. Why? Well, that's the observations. Yeah. Stick to the good behavior because it has what? It's got a better consequence, right? There's not that's collateral right. damage to this. It's the same thing with your movement patterns. That's bad behavior. That's good behavior. The bad behavior has, has a consequence. The good behavior has a consequence, right? And the, the consequence of good behavior is a life full of connective tissue and joint segment health. And the consequence of bad behavior is ACL shreds, Achilles shreds, joint replacements, itises, unexplained pain, pills, surgery. It's all negative over there. Don't do the negative behavior. Do the good behavior. We, we innately know this. We tend to let our common sense get robbed at times because we're so like information heavy and it's got to be accredited and make sure the guy in the ivory tower checks off on it. No, man, I'm good. I'm going to stick with my slow motion video. 
You all got your flashcards. Let's go tit for tat. Best practice wins. We're in a different world right now. Social yeah. media has blown the gates open. We've all yeah. got access to the YouTube glossary. We've all got access to slow motion video. We can say, hey, this is showing us something. And then I can connect with you on it. And then you can connect with other people. We don't need to go over to Harvard and Yale. They're cool. You got your own thing. We got ours. We can discuss amongst ourselves what the best practice is for our athletes. Who's coming to you guys? You got any high level athletes coming that are yes. starting, to, so starting Gary, to try to change? Yeah. So Gary Scheffler uh, at GLS underscore training, he's the really the, the head strength coach, if you will, the performance coach of GOTA. And, you know, the, the, the big name guy that he's had there since he was a young kid is Jamar Chase, who was a Blitnikoff winner. And so he's a you know, home, homegrown guy. Um, he's been doing phenomenal. He, you should see his before and after. Uh, Daryl Williams from the Chiefs. Um, we've got a couple guys from uh, the NBA and the MLB starting to show up. Nice. So there's, there's more and more NFL guys and MLB and, and you know, um, NBA guys that are showing up. And they're interested because, once again, most of what brings them here is they're injured. So, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to convince somebody that's not injured. They're like, yeah, I'm good, whatever. And then the injury happens, and they're like, oh, okay, I, that guy was saying something that I was going to get injured, and I did get injured. Let me go see, and mm -hmm. go see about what they're saying. So that kind of tends to be the way that people get their information from that's us. Right. Is, hey, you're going to probably get injured doing that? Oh, yeah, whatever, I'm good. Then they get injured, and they come back. So, but more and more people – Keep looking it up. The more coaches we get, there's more content out there on Instagram. So like you said, it really is a grassroots production. It's kind of a bunch of guys just out there spreading a message. How many coaches are there? So we're approaching 100 coaches. Awesome. So we're, yeah, we're approaching 100 coaches. And, you know, we've got certifications. You know, the way we do it is we'll do a 12-week online, you know, really that incubation period of the seat, seeing the slow motion evidence, going through the non-contacts, going through the GOTAs, going through the WOTAs, going through both sides of it, seeing what we're saying in, in, in slow motion, really developing that GOTA eye. Then we'll bring them down for a lab weekend in Marrero at the brick and mortar in Marrero, Louisiana. And we'll spend three days really dialing into the kinesthetic feel. Here's how we see it. Here's how you feel it in your body. Can you feel that? Can you, can you explain that to somebody else and get them to feel it? After we got those two things, rep it out. Rep it out, rep it out, be creative with your reps, uh, be understanding of the client at hand, use the support that's available to you, and then ramp them up to where you challenge them more and more dynamically, and then always taking into account what is it that this athlete wants to do. Is it just somebody that wants to walk and get out of pain and enjoy their life? Are they 50, 60? That's a different program than, let's say, Jamar Chase, who's getting ready to go play a football season or, or you know, an old lineman that's getting ready to do battle. So we just kind of, it's depending on what that athlete wants, but the blueprint, the base camp is GOTA. And GOTA is an inside ankle bone high, back chain dominant, forward rotary ILS. And that's the operating system that was the default system for hundreds of thousands of years out in the bush. That system's getting decoded from sedentary lifestyle or doubling down on the lifting engine and now making that lifting engine the default ILS. It's not a coincidence that when that power lifter gets that huge weight off the ground and then they walk off the, the, uh, the, the boards, they're still walking like they were lifting. Because yeah. they've been doing that for a lifetime. They've been teaching that to their nervous system. So we want to revalue the default pattern and make that the goal, to, to, to be able to see that in slow motion from our client. Everything's off of slow motion video. We've got historicals on you. We're going to see you on day one, and we're going to watch you progress, and we're going to move you on that spectrum. If you're GOTA, we're going to keep you there. We're going to tell you what not to do so that you don't go the other way on the spectrum. Yeah, don't reprogram yourself in a bad way. Yeah, if you're GOTA, we got to start moving you. we got to start moving you on that spectrum towards GOTA and keep you over there. So it just depends on where you're at. All right, one more time with the two books that you said at the top. Yeah, I'm so gonna, I'm um, going to get those and read those. Yes, there, there are deep dives. The spinal engine's thick, but so spinal engine theory by uh, Sergey Grakovetsky and then muscles and meridians by Philip Beach. And those are okay. really, you know, it's a lot of anatomy and it's a lot of, but the overall, the base message is really good. And it really helps you kind of think. It makes you think. And it's a lot yeah. of critical thinking because it's not what you're used to. And there's a lot that is in spinal engine that you can kind of skip through. It's a very thick book, but 
You know, it's got a lot of math and algorithms in there, but the base understanding of what Sergey was trying to get across and then coupled with the knowledge from Muscles and Meridians, you start to see what, it's, what, it's, what they're talking about with this gearbox. And so those were two books that were really huge for me. And then the slow motion video ties it all together. Because that's then it, then it becomes, well, now you, you don't want to read about anything anymore. Because there's nothing yeah. to be learned. You, I can't see yeah, energy see it. through yeah. the paper. Like, I, I can't see. I need to watch this. I need to watch the energy enter and leave that person's body to make a decision. We can read all we want, but at some point, we got to get our eyes on this athlete. I got to see them move through space. And we've got to have a context of, well, what's good and what's bad? And this idea that, well, anything's good. Well, it just doesn't have, that doesn't make any sense because you got guys taking a step back and popping their Achilles when they've been living inside ankle bone roll their whole life. If anybody's going to strengthen it, it should have been those guys. And it's not happening. And the numbers keep, keep reflecting that we've got a movement issue. And lastly, how can people come join the team, either as a coach or as an athlete? Yep, yep. So Everybody. you can obviously Instagram is kind of where we do most of our mm -hmm. sort of marketing and, and drop a lot of content on there. So look for us on Instagram. Look at uh, uh, me, Red Pill Rick, uh, Cody underscore Goda, uh, at GLS underscore training, at Goda underscore Loco. If you just type in Goda Movements, you're going to start to see all of our names pop up. Um, Twitter is a little bit of stuff. Facebook, obviously, Facebook and Instagram are, are where I would start. Um, and then if you're interested in being a coach, I would get in touch with um, Cody. So is, you know, Cody underscore go to, he's the guy that's kind of doing all the, you know, organization of getting everybody into the Slack channels and do all that. And if you're an athlete, reach out to any of us coaches and, you know, find out there's a coach in your city. And if there's a coach in your city, you can go visit them and get more of that, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, type work. And then we have a go to movement app um, that we, that we can do for, you know, online. So we can now assess athletes online. We can never, you know, I can work with anybody all across the world where we can assess through the app and then build a workout for them and have a calendar and have it all set up. So they have that app and they can just kind of go through and follow step by step what to do each day um, on their recode. And everything's obviously based off of what we saw in the assessment. Ricky, that was awesome, man. Thank hey, you. I appreciate you having me on. I really do. I mean, the, to get a platform is, is awesome. It's exactly what we need. We're just going to keep chopping wood and carrying water, man. That's what we do. Yeah, keep going because it's, it's going to be impactful. Eventually, the groundswell is going to come your way. So great job. Keep it up, and I'll keep learning from you. I'll keep following you. Absolutely. Let's stay in touch, brother. All right. Thanks, Ricky. Hey, I'll send you everything, too, when we're done with okay. this. Okay. All, All right. right. Perfect. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great work. All right. Thank you. All right. Take see you, easy, buddy. Bye-bye.